ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to prince pipes and fittings limited q3 and 9m fy24 earnings conference call hosted by ntq stock broking as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phones please note that this conference is been recorded i now hand the conference over to mr janish karya from ntq stock broking thank you and over to you sir yes thank you adit sir on behalf of ntq stock broking i would like to welcome all the participants on 3q and 9 months fy24 earnings conference call of prince pipes and fittings limited from the management we have on the call mr parag chheda joint managing director mr nihal chheda vice president strategy mr anand gupta cfo and mr karl pola head investor relation without further ado i would like to hand over the call to mr parag chheda for his opening remarks post which we shall open the floor for q and a thank you and over to you sir thanks uh, janesh good morning and thank you for joining us for a quarter 3 and 9 months fy24 earnings call the presentation and the press release have been issued to the stock exchanges and uploaded on our website i hope everybody has been able to click the same our performance this quarter witnessed margin improving by 2 basis points to 12.2% and 6% year on year growth in profitability our volume this quarter stood at 42665 metric tons and overall revenues were at 619 crores the quarter was a challenge in terms of driving volumes however we were resilient in protecting profit margin despite the high base effect of quarter 3 in the last fiscal which witnessed strong restocking in the distributor channel after the stabilization of pvc prices we are aggressively focusing on driving volume growth through various efforts in that expanding distribution and strengthening the channel network we are also adding new products to build portfolio depth strengthening our brand equity and building a robust presence in the project segment with all the initiatives we are hopeful of returning to a healthy volume growth in the next fiscal year aligned with our vision to expand we are happy to share that our new integrated manufacturing facility at Bigusarai in Bihar is underway and we conducted the ceremonial bhumi pujan in December to mark the auspicious start of construction which has already begun and is progressing well i'm also happy to share that we have accomplished the first full quarter of sales in our bathroom segment and the initial response has been encouraging from dealers and consumers where our products have been installed we continue to penetrate key in key tier 2 and 3 markets of northern india like shrinagar punjab haryana delhi rajasthan uttar pradesh and western india like gujarat and rest of maharashtra we have also started participating at exhibition and events across the country which has drawn a positive response our water tank segment continues to do well as we continue to leverage our multi location manufacturing presence and achieve healthy traction in the first 9 months of this fiscal we will soon be setting up water tank manufacturing in haridwar and chennai following which we will have seven in house water tank manufacturing locations in addition to engaging our channel partners in industry exhibition and events across india our marketing efforts are also focusing on extending the b2b brand category 
to engage directly with the audiences through B2C contact programs and events across India to build stronger brand recognition. During the quarter, we also introduced new products, thus building greater depth to the portfolio. We launched the DuraTap range including faucets and showers. DuraTap is manufactured with PTNT material, which is a thermoplastic that combines the advantages of both plastic and metal. Being a specialty engineering plastic, PTNT has great advantages over the other materials in terms of functionality and longevity and is aimed at the cost conscious mass market. We also launched TerraFit, subsurface drainage pipes and innovative solutions addressing challenges related to excessive subsurface water. Overcoming challenges like impermeable soil, shallow bedrock and dense glacial fin are solution ensures rapid water percolation and the product is ideal for maintaining stability in agriculture and at the airport as well. We continue to maintain a strong focus on our manufacturing processes and our Tadara plant has been awarded IMEA India Manufacturing Excellent Award Silver Certificate of Merit as part of the Frost and Sullivan India Manufacturing Excellence Award 2023. As you are aware, IME's assessment framework evaluates organizations on their manufacturing capability, supply chain reliability, and technology adoption. In addition, our Athal plant won the IME Excel Commitment Prize for the continued excellence in operation. This is a premier program that recognizes efforts put into facilitating operational excellence and building a sustainable improvement culture. Our business fundamentals continue to be healthy. As we focus on growth strategies, optimizing capacity utilization, expanding market penetration, and optimizing our product mix. We are progressing aggressively and we will continue to focus efforts to capture market opportunities across our core segments of pipes and fittings, bathware and water tanks. The interim budget 2024 has been recently tabled and broadly it has kept its focus on fiscal prudence as expected. The proposals highlighted are in the right direction towards supporting the government's aim of transforming India into a developed country by 2047. The government, the government's strong intent to continue the development of core sectors of infrastructure, rail, airport, agriculture, and housing, others well for the building materials and pipes and fittings industry that play an active role by bringing innovative solutions and technologies. Thank you for your time. I will now hand it over to Anand to take you through the key financial highlights. Thank you, Paraguay, and good morning, friends. Uh, we had our board meeting on our Telangana plant yesterday, and we are taking this call today from Hyderabad. Taking a look at the quarterly highlights as follows. In this quarter, the revenue is at the 619 crores. Our finished good volume reported at 42,655 metric tons. We delivered a healthy operating performance with EBITDA at 76 crore rupees. For the quarter, reporting a growth of 9% on the year of year basis. Our margins were enhanced by 240 basis points year on year at 12.6%. ANP spend for the quarter has increased to 12 crores. Our profit after tax for the quarter grew by 6% reported at rupees 38 crores. We continue to judicially expand our channels and program and we have made steady progress in the report as to the distributors and we have increased the pace limit of our channel partners. With this, we would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you.
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Achal from JM Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, good morning team. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question is with respect to the volume performance. So if you look at last four or five quarters, it, it uh, optically appears to us that we are kind of underperforming most of the peers. So um, if you could highlight A in terms of how the industry growth could have been in last nine months uh, and, and uh, B, uh, what is driving this underperformance? And the uh, uh, corrective actions, uh, uh, you know, you you have taken or uh, undertaking right now. That's my first question, please. Yeah, thank you, Achal. Um For the question, I think it's important to address this. So I'm happy this is the first question of the call. Um, so firstly, we acknowledge the underperformance, obviously, that's uh, been apparent for the past few quarters. Um, the way we see it is, I think it boils down to two factors. I think, of course, the uh, first two quarters of the year, uh, we saw challenges in supply chain because of the ERP uh, challenges, which led to some market share loss. Uh, and we are in the process of regaining that uh, market share. Um, and the second is uh, what I had stated in the previous quarter call, is that there is some pricing action that we have taken, correction in pricing. Uh, in some markets, uh, key markets, we felt that we had been outpriced by uh, competitors and that pricing action we have taken. Uh, you will see that that is actually uh, visible in our realizations per ton, um, which have decreased. This has been a conscious effort to become more um, competitive or aggressive in the market. And uh, both these factors will take some time. Uh, to So the corrective action has been done which is visible, but the results will take um, a couple of quarters. So I feel that by first quarter of next financial year, we should start um, performing in line with industry. Um, if not, uh, being the fastest growing player in the industry. Um, what I will also add is, uh, you know, the fundamentals remain the same. Uh, we continue to work on network expansion, new product launches, and continue to be aggressive in uh, creating visibility for the brand, so none of that changes. Uh, it's the same team, the same product, the same market, so the fundamentals won't change. This has been uh, two factors which we feel have uh, led to this underperformance, and we are confident that the action that we have taken, um, we will see uh, results uh, from the first quarter of next financial year. And to conclude, I can, you know, come to the table and say that the mind share and the effort right from the MD to the frontline sales team continues to, to be the same. So there is no lack of uh, mind share or efforts. Uh, we acknowledge that there is an underperformance. The action has been uh, taken. Um, and we are confident that the numbers are speaking from uh, June quarter of uh, FR25. So hopefully that uh, brings some clarity to the question. Yeah, thanks, Neha, for the answer. Just a clarification, did you say that uh, the the uh, impact of the corrective actions will be seen from fourth quarter of FI25? Or did I get it right? June quarter. Okay, one to FI25. Okay, um, thanks for that clarification. Uh, the second question I had, uh, you know, uh, is this uh, market share loss uh, anything to do with the distributor switching? or any particular geography where uh, there is a loss of market share, um, if you could comment on the same as well? Yeah, so I don't think it is. So firstly, uh, it is not at the distributor level. This is more at the retail space. Our distributors continue to be uh, loyal with us. We have supported them through thick and thin, um, and these are long-term relationships. So uh, 
you know, they are supporting the company in the challenging times of the first two quarters throughout that uh, ERP transition. So we are confident that the primary relationships with our distributors are uh, stronger than ever and that, you know, one or two challenging quarters cannot change that. This is more to do with uh, market share loss at the secondary level, at the retail level, uh, because of the supply chain disruptions we had, which impacted the supply chain of our distributors. Um, and that is taking time to regain. Yes, it has been more apparent in certain geographies, which we have uh, identified and uh, focused efforts um, have already started, you know, focused actions have already started in those particular geographies. But to re-clarify, none of the primary distribution uh, relationships, uh, you know, are being impacted by these one or two disruptive quarters. Um, and I think now with the complete normalization of supply chain and the rest of the efforts in the right direction, uh, the market share will be gained uh, back. And uh, like I said, we'll be on track from the quarter. Understood. Uh, another question I had for the quarter, uh, you know, in terms of the inventory loss and also, uh, you know, in terms of the growth for agri and uh, plumbing, how uh, uh, was it for the third quarter for us? So I'll take the second part of the question first, and then Anand can uh, take up the inventory loss. I think uh, the growth, uh, I think, continues to be stronger in uh, building materials relative to agri. Anyway, I think December quarter is not a very high um, quarter for agri. You will see uh, agri at an industry level, agri being more relevant in the March quarter and the June quarter, uh, because it's a seasonal business, unlike building materials. And I think the way real estate and infrastructure is growing, I think for the foreseeable future, the building material part of the portfolio will continue to grow at a faster pace. Agri will grow as well because PVC prices are now extremely affordable. Um, so Agri will continue to grow, but I think the pace of growth will be higher in the plumbing and SWR uh, segments for the uh, foreseeable uh, future. So for this uh, quarter, the unit loss will be in range of around 10 crores. And that has impacted in the PNL, which we uh, are. Understood. I just want to clarification, Anand, if you could, with respect to Bathware business, Hello, what sir. has been the. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Call off my uh, interview. Yes, sir. You. Please oh, thank you. limit your questions. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your question to two per participants. Should I have a follow up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Shubham Agrawal from Access Capital. Please go ahead, sir. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, on the previous participant's question, is uh, you said that the corrective price actions that we've taken in Q2 uh, will probably be visible two quarter hence, that is in Q1 FI25. So uh, just uh, to understand, can you elaborate on this? Like what leads to a two quarter lag for the uh, growth to be seen? And if you can also elaborate, you know, what kind of price discount or, or what was mis what, what was mispriced and how did you correct it? What kind of pricing actions are you taking? If you can elaborate more on this. Sure. Happy to give more clarity on this. Uh, so one is, I think there are two factors that uh, we have um, identified internally. One is the ERP challenges. The ERP challenges are true, but as a result of the challenges in the first half of the fiscal, there was some market share loss. Uh, and, you know, the market, it, it is not like an on and off switch. It takes some time to recoup the market share that is lost, whatever the reason for the market share loss is. Again, we'll reiterate, it's not at the primary level, but it's at the secondary level. Um, so that takes a couple of quarters. So we estimate that by June quarter, uh, we would be, you know, in a position to perform at par with industry, um, if not outpace, uh, which, which is what we are used to as an organization. And the second is the pricing action, which um, we had highlighted in the September quarter uh, conference call as well, that in certain markets, so we are not discounting the peers. In certain markets, we felt that we had over-premiumized in our drive of premiumization, um, which, uh, you know, led to this kind of a challenging uh, volume scenario. So it's just that the pricing has now become realigned. So I would not say that we are doing any predatory deep discounting or anything. We are very clear in terms of whatever growth that will be there, it will be a profitable growth. So there's no deep discounting as such. It's more just a realignment of pricing to ensure that we are competitive and market friendly. 
and again that will just take i think one more quarter to really start um showing in terms of the results but in terms of action it has already been taken which is visible on if you see our realization per ton has been a correction and that's a conscious uh, correction that we have taken as we had uh, stated in the previous uh, quarter call so right. keeping this in mind i think from 1q uh, we should be back on track we are confident right. this is helpful yeah so uh, given this context uh, and the corrective actions taking uh, now what are you expecting what kind of growth can we see in q4 fy23 how have how has january fared out for you in terms of growth and what should we expect in fy25 so uh, you know i would say as fy25 uh, i think we will be at par with industry growth uh, and hopefully we start uh, outpacing industry growth in due time uh, and uh, you know that's yeah, that's how Jan- we see it in terms of fy and january and q4 fy24 uh yeah 24 yeah we have seen a style so i would stay away from quantifying anything in the middle of the quarter we have never done that as an organization but we have seen uh, a healthy operational performance in january okay got it. and just on the batcher revenue and uh, loss that we incurred this quarter that's all that's my last question so uh, this was the first full quarter for sales in batcher segment and we have got the encouraging response from dealers and consumers uh we are we have uh, mega brands so felt in more than 100 retail touch points as a uh, product continues to make uh deep in those in tier 2 as well as tier 3 markets of north india and western india uh, so full that a full quarter sales is around 6 crores uh, which uh, we have uh, registered that uh, is in the top line and uh, on the expense side for this quarter uh, it's around 3 crores okay. this is good bank power and empty spending book 3 crores is the net loss you said no, delegated right So I can give you two numbers: one for sale, that is six crores, and the other yeah. side is the sale uh, as the expense number, which includes employee cost and AMP spend, that is three crores. Okay, got it. Thank you, Anand. Yeah. That's. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Shaurya Shah from Equity Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. I'm an agreeable guy from Kerala. So, uh, first, wanted to understand uh, on the competition coming in from the unorganized or kind of regional players. There are uh, you know multiple new entrants uh, that the industry has seen over last two three years. So, since the PVC prices has kind of rallied down uh, significantly and are at affordable range now, uh, wanted to understand on that point. Could you repeat your question? Actually, we are not clear on the question. Hello. Uh, so, is this better? Yeah. Yeah. So, I wanted to understand on the competition or the uh, competition coming in from the unorganized or regional players. Uh, the industry saw uh, you know two three new players entering the industry in last uh, two three years. So, wanted to understand first on that point. So I think new entrants we have always seen as part and parcel of this industry because we have typically been a high growth, uh, high return kind of industry. We have always seen these new entrants coming in. Some have done well, some have not. Um, I think there's immense growth opportunity, and seeing that kind of growth opportunity, we you know we have always seen new entrants. Um, I continue to believe that this is an organized market with 65% of the market being organized, only consolidating at a uh, faster pace. Um, as the end user becomes more and more brand conscious uh, yes we did see some uh, unorganized players going out of the market because of the extreme volatility and we were always prepared that a part of that would uh, come back and part would you know permanently be out of the market um, but you know i think fundamentals remain the same at the micro economics level for a builder typing cost is less than 1 1.5% of overall cost so builder in is always going to choose to invest in a good quality brand um, that is established and well known and uh, visible in the market since decades um, so i believe this this industry is already organized and will continue to um, organize itself and consolidate and the big will continue to get uh, bigger in the long term understood sir understood 
and uh, uh, second wanted to understand on the uh, demand movement uh, you know coming in from the government schemes i think uh, some of them are nearing the completion deadline uh, so what's the revised outlook on that uh, maybe on the government scheme demand Uh, so I think anyway, we have not been very aggressive in in the government space because of the extended credit cycles. Um, so and, and I do believe that this uh, it, it depends on state to state. Certain states the programs are coming to a end, but then certain states will uh, pick up. And we have started selectively participating in these uh, programs uh, for HDP types as well as uh, agriculture types, um, but only when the credit cycle uh, has been filled. So I think every state has their own cycle. So if and then there are certain cycles for certain states which are coming to an end, and certain states it's only now starting. Uh, but overall, I think with the kind of focus that the government has on water infrastructure, I think this is a space that will be become more and more significant over the next few years at least. Understood, sir. And sir, lastly, uh, uh, on the channel destocking. Uh, you know there have been divergent views from multiple uh, management of whether this talking did happen or uh, the scale was low uh, what's your view on the uh, you know uh, on the quarter uh, with respect to the channel uh, channel stocking levels so the channel level right now would be uh, i would say moderate uh, i think the good part is that pvc prices are extremely uh, affordable and more importantly than affordable they are also very stable So any increase or decrease that we are seeing is not very sharp, uh, which was not the case in the past two financial years. Luckily now, uh, you know, apart from the affordability, the the range is very very low. So even if there is an increase or decrease, it has never been more than one or two rupees, which means that there is not very sharp restocking, and neither is there very sharp destocking, uh, and there is no shock to the channel. Uh, so not only will you not see major inventory gain or loss, but you will also see a more stable inventory levels uh, through the channel, um, which I think is good for the long term. It makes it more uh, sustainable and a more growth conducive environment. So to answer your question, even for the immediate term, I don't see immense destocking or restocking. um i think uh, channel is and whatever i am interacting with my top uh, distributor i understand that it's moderate inventory and we will continue to do that as long as the pricing environment remains volatile and organize as an organization we believe that pvc prices from here will be range bound and you will not see immense volatility uh, both ways even upward and downward i think there is a cap uh, and we will see a extremely Um, stable and range-bound pricing environment. Thank you, sir. Uh, this was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sneha from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir, and thanks a lot for the opportunity. Couple of questions from my end. Uh, firstly, on the market share loss, could you give us some sense where this loss has largely been? Is it on the PVC side? Is it been on the CPVC side? Just product wise, and is there any spe- specific geography where that you have seen, you know, uh, market share losses? Yeah, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, yes, this uh, market share loss has been specific to certain geographies uh, and certain products. Uh, which the team has identified, and that data analysis has been done by the team. And the corrective action that we have taken, again, in in terms of pricing, uh, and even in terms of being slightly more aggressive with creating brand visibility, is not something which is blanket across the country, across product categories. It is specific to certain geographies and to certain products. Uh, so that has been identified uh, by the sales function, and that corrective action has already been taken. um which is visible uh, in our uh, realization data so it is not across the uh, market it in it in certain markets for certain product category uh, which uh, correct direction has been taken could you give us some sense versus example the cpvc would have been dropped by what percentage approximate and what would have been the loss in pvc So I think, yeah, you are aware. Uh, segmental margins we don't give, uh, and segmental uh, growth also we don't share. 
Um, it actually, I can say, building material has done better than agri, um, even at an industry level, uh, because of the growth drivers. But uh, I don't think it would be fair for me to give uh, segmental uh, performance because we never have. It's even in, in you know, whenever there has been good quarters or bad quarters, segmental we have stayed away from, and I would continue to do that. Where would our pricing be at this point of time versus peers, since you have taken those price correction measures? Yeah, so yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, it's important to to say that we are not deep discounting to peers. Gone are the days where we are going to do that to gain market share. This is more uh, to realign the premiumization that we had done in markets where we felt we were outpriced. Um, we have corrected that to bring it to parity. Uh, to peers in the markets where um, you know we benchmark certain peers for certain markets, uh, and for PVC and CPVC. So this is not some deep discounting or predatory pricing. It's just a realignment of pricing. As you are aware, we had gone through, we were going through a premiumization drive, uh, not only from a pricing point of view, but also from a brand point of view, also from a product uh, point of view. Um, and you know, in, as a part of that drive, in certain markets, we felt that we had become outsized, which then led to this kind of a uh, market share loss. So that correction has been done. So the action has been taken for it to translate into results, and for the market to realize that, and um, you know, for that to uh, translate into uh, volume performance, so we'll we'll take a couple of we'll take one quarter. So which is why we are guiding from June quarter. We will be at par with um, industry growth. Understood. In terms of our working capital requirement, where do we stand in terms of our debtors and inventory? Debtors is at 72 days, and uh, inventory is at around uh, 78 days. Uh, so. The reason uh, I could see our last con call we've discussed our debtors day being at 63 days, so that's significantly up, in fact, even inventory. Uh, is there any push which is happening in this channel at this point of time? No, I don't think this is, uh, this is you know, every quarter there is a slight uh, uh, increase or decrease, but we are confident that uh, it should come back to the 60s. Um, in terms of debtors, I think inventory anyway, we have guided for it to be around 70 days and currently is around 75 days. So I think inventory is at a normal level and uh, payables is around 79 days, which puts our net working capital um, around 69 days uh, for this quarter. Understood. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, team. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Chira. From Melubist, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was on PVC. Uh, if you can help us understand how it's been the volume growth for the first nine months there, and this corrective pricing action is it done to CPVC portfolio as well, or it is restricted to PVC? Uh, it is. So we have identified wherever the market share has been lost on account of pricing. Whether that if it was in PVC or in CPVC for that respective markets, uh, we have taken that uh, action. Um, so I will stay away from giving segmental uh, breakup, but whatever had to be done has been done, which is why we are confident that the uh, growth will uh, come back. It's not restricted to a particular uh, product or geography. Wherever that requirement was there, we have taken the action. And if you can just call out uh, our current capacity and utilization currently. Okay. So currently we are at around 50-52% uh, of capacity utilization at an installed level. 50-52%? And uh, what, what would be our ANP for the quarter and first nine months? For the quarter, it is around 12 crores and uh, around 39 crores for nine months. Uh, for MP and just lastly, if you can just uh, say gross debt and cash balance. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? 
what would be our gross debt today and uh, net cash balance plus investment. So, yeah, gross debt is around uh, 50 crores. Uh, that is short term, and uh, for the house facility, we have taken long term as well, which we have started uh, uh, taking disbursements. That is very uh, small in numbers right now. As we are progressing in civil uh, construction. Uh, the four goes on a long term uh, uh, debt and 60 uh, around on a short term debt. So uh, that is our debt perspective. Okay. okay, and cash balance also? Cash balance is around uh, 120 crores at the end of uh, uh, quarter. Okay, thank you, and all Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Keshav from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I want to understand on the HDP front. So, what I remember earlier, we are more like a 3% of volume, which we expect to have, you know, increased to 78%. When that will be done, how is the progress happening on that front? So our first set of expansion uh, of HDP has uh, taken place at uh, Jaipur facility, um, and uh, machines are running at uh, you know ideal uh, capacity utilization for HDP at Jaipur. Um, and I think once this is sustainable over the next one or two quarters, um, and the market demand uh, seems to continue to head in the right direction. Uh, we will continue to expand uh, HPP capacity as well. So the first phase at Jaipur is, is complete. Um, and once this is sustainable, we are not opposed to increasing capacity in HPP if uh, opportunity seems to be sustainable. Okay. Understood. So one, one thing you highlighted that you will grow in line with industry. So how should I read this comment? Like this year, your BSC is pretty low because of you know ERP issues and other thing on the H1 side. So in line with industry FY25, you're talking or you're talking in line with industry on a base of FY23. So this guidance, what I've given is is, is long term that we will be at par with industry. Of course, if there is a base effect, a positive base effect, that would be favorable for us. I think it's very hard for me to quantify all that sitting today, but uh, we are confident that the actions have been taken, and uh, in the right, you know, by June quarter that will start reflecting, and the numbers will start talking. Um, and we have always been used to being the fastest growing player in the industry, and we are confident that the fundamentals remain the same, and the mind share uh, from the uh, you know promoters and the efforts from the team. Uh, are the same as they used to be, if not better. So we are confident that uh, the growth will be back on track. Understood. Last uh, two questions from my side. Firstly, on the capex side, the capex size is increased. So how will be this capex split up for Bihar will be, and what has been the CPVC price correction in Q4? So on the next one, uh, we, are, we are going ahead with the integrated facility. Earlier we had announced that we will only come up with the piping facility. Now the two cases have been combined and we will be coming up with the piping as well as setting facility both in uh, in Bihar. So the capex uh, uh, has, uh, the proposed capex earlier was on this, around 150 crores. Now it will be around 220 crores. That is how the capex for Bihar will be. And as we see that the market in East uh, has been going on a higher side, the, the capacity which will add in Bihar will help us uh, to, to, to gain the market share over there. And the utilization will be at a healthy level uh, once Bihar starts uh, coding. Over there. And so we are coming up with tanks facility as well. So uh, uh, that would also help us to uh, have a better penetration in the tanks market in the east of India. Uh, so my question was more towards the split of Bihar in FY24 and FY25 and CPVC price correction. In FY24 it will be around 50 to 
25 crores. Uh, why I'm giving this range because it depends on the kind of execution speed we will be giving in the, at the end of March. So the high on the top side it will be around 25. Uh, with a team, it, it excludes the land which we have already taken in CP, uh, that is around 27-28 crores. Uh, I'm uh, talking from the city point of view, and the rest will be in FY25. Uh, you know, the balance which remains around 175 crores, uh, 170 to 175 in FY25. Got it, got it. So CP, we see? Just to add to what just to add to what Anand is saying and connecting the dots from the previous few questions, um, we continue to be aggressive with adding capacity. Um, and, you know, this whatever current underperformance we are seeing, we are not faced by that. And as an organization, um, we continue to be aggressive with adding capacity and none of those plans change, um, which I think underlines the kind of uh, confidence that we have in, in terms of um, quickly regaining our market share and becoming the fastest growing player in the industry. In fact, we have added capacity in the December quarter as well at the Jaipu plant for HPP and the Chennai plant for uh, PVC. So we have already added 10 kT more in the December quarter, taking our total installed capacity uh, to 3,38,000 from 3,28,000 at the end of September. So we continue to de bottleneck existing facilities, invest in new products, and continue to take the same pace of execution at Bihar and, in fact, increase the capex there uh, across sites, fittings, and water types, which underlines our confidence not only at you know, the, the buoyancy of demand at the industry level, but our own uh, ability to execute and grow at industry level. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, CPVC price correction? Yeah, there has been correction in uh, CPVC input cost and that has been passed on to the market. Okay. Would you like to quantify the number in Q4, Q3? Uh, in Q3, I don't have the numbers offhand, but I think it would be on the uh, range of 5 to 7 percent, but happy to, you know, my team can get back to you on that. Okay, okay. Thank you. That is helpful. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. I think the queue has been deleted. Can uh, people who are there in the question queue please uh, press star and one again to rejoin? I think. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask questions. Uh, moderator, I think people are uh, messaging me saying that the star and one uh, function is not working. Can you check? Okay, sir. sir. Just, I, I think we've got uh, two people. Okay, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rajesh Shri here. Uh, my question pertains to first on the uh, you know impact of muted government capex outlook uh, towards the uh, water infrastructure projects for you know in the budget. Uh, how do you read these uh, in terms of will this uh, you know is a precursor to demand slowdown uh, in FY25-26? Can you repeat the question? We're not able to hear you clearly. Yeah, hi, sir. Am I audible now? Yeah. Hello, audible? Yes. 
Yeah, sir, would you uh, show some understanding on uh, this government, uh, you know, the budgetary uh, expenditure outlook for FY25, which has been kept at flattish level? How do you read these numbers? Uh, you know, will it slow down uh, the, you know, the industry growth going forward? No, I think uh, government continues to be bullish on water infrastructure, so I think in the long term, uh, this is going to be a you know, key driver for growth at an industry level. For Prince specifically, we have not been very aggressive with the participation in these government schemes because of the credit risk um, that's associated with it. So wherever there has been a favorable credit cycle, we have participated, but otherwise we have largely stayed away from this. Right. And if you're talking in terms of opportunity size for the industry, yeah. over the long term it continues to be uh, buoyant. Um, and, and I think that's clear uh, that the uh, focus to bring pipe water access to every rural household in the country uh, is strong. And a uh, few states could see um, uh, you know, end of the program uh, because they have been successfully able to get access to rural households. But I think still there is a large part of most states where water access to potable water is a challenge. And mm -hmm. I think uh, those states will now start picking up. So I don't see that as a uh, major challenge. Uh, also, uh, talking on the inventory losses, uh, could you uh, quantify over the nine months how much inventory loss we have booked in and how much resin inventory do you maintain at company level, both for PVC and CPVC compound? So we have around 10 crores of inventory loss for quarter three. Uh, I don't have the nine month number handy, but if you go through the transcripts for June quarter and uh, September quarter, you would get that. Uh, else, you can reach out to Carl after the call and he can share the nine month sure. inventory loss. And, yeah, how much um, is in inventory? And I think yeah. the yeah, so at, an, uh, at any point of time, we uh, have around uh, 30 days of raw material inventory and 30 days of finished good inventory as a broad company. Um, CPVC would be lower than that because we, uh, you know, buy Lutrazol, which is uh, locally produced. So that would be around maybe 7 to 10 days of inventory. But overall, at an organization level, the raw material inventory would be around 30 days as a thumb rule and finished good would, would be around uh, 30 to 40 days. Okay, two more questions, sir. CPVC resin price you mentioned five to seven percent would have declined in Q3. Uh, what has been the trend in Q4? Uh, there has been no correction yet. No correction yet. And so, lastly, on the Bihar uh, expansion, could you quantify the size that we are adding both on the pipes as well as on the fittings? So it will be around in the range of 50 kg to 52 kg uh, uh, when it will be operational. Uh, it is a combined uh, capacity for pipes and fittings. And this fitting, how much you are looking at, sir? What's uh... 50 kg to 52 kg. Sorry, pipes how much? Pipes and combined. Are there pipes and fittings combined? 50 to 52. Yes. Okay, okay, understood. And lastly, uh, you know, could you uh, talk about this uh, um, Okay, sir, I think uh, most of my, uh, those questions, NP expenses you have already explained. I'll come back in queue. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Thank the you. line of Rahul Agrawal from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, good morning to all on the call. Sir, uh, one question, you know, broadly on the industry demand for pipes. It looks like uh, within building materials, a lot of real estate is under construction. Hence, you know, pipes, cables and wires are actually seeing better demand versus, you know, stuff which is used much later. You know, stuff like tiles, wood panels. The commentary has been really weak from those guys. Question is, do we see a scenario ahead over the next two years where Weaker products actually see higher demand and pipe slows down. You know, any study on lead indicators of real estate under planning stage, you know, more on the drawing board that should help sustain pipe demand? That's my first question. Uh, so if I answer the question right, uh, it's in terms of sustainability of demand for pipes uh, given, uh, you know, the real estate demand. So we believe Real estate demand is, is, is strong. I think the numbers are out in the open. You guys would know better than we do. 
and whatever ground level interaction that I'm having with the developers across the country and my sales team and project channel partners, I think this seems to be sustainable. Um, and all of this is despite the cost of capital being high. We believe once cost of capital uh, reduces, you will, uh, you know, see a more sustainable demand in real estate. Um, so whatever interactions we've been having at the ground level, I think real estate demand is here to stay. And as far as price is concerned, we come somewhere in the middle of the cycle for any new project. Um, so we believe that at least for the next two to three years, if not more, uh, you know, taking a longer term view, I think at least for two to three years, um, overall real estate demand should do well. And as a result of which demand for, um, I think we believe should be sustainable. And that's the reason we are aggressively, we have added capacity aggressively uh, in Jaipur and Telangana over the past three, four years, we have added 75 KT. And now we are adding 50 KT. Um, initially, our plan was around 40 KT, which now we have scaled up to 50 KT for Bihar. So I think that more than anything shows our uh, conviction um, in not only industry demand, uh, but also our ability to participate and contribute in the growth of the Indian lighting industry. Got it. Uh, also, when you say we'll grow in line with industry and gain back market share, my sense is if you gain back market share, obviously your growth has to be higher in the industry, right? I mean, that's the only way to gain market share back for whatever you've lost. Is that understanding correct? Sure. Okay. Uh, and few clarifications. The Bihar CapEx 220 crores, that includes the tanks CapEx, right? That includes the? The water tank CapEx. Yeah, yeah, it includes water tank as well. Okay. And bathware, uh, Ananji, you said 6 crores top line and 3 crores EBITDA loss for the quarter. Is that understanding correct? Oh, so I said 6 crores top line, 3 crores expense, uh, expense of employee cost and ANP spend. Okay. So then it means that we made 3 crores positive EBITDA for the quarter. So we'll have to, uh, we don't have to see quarter to quarter, we have to see as a long term uh, uh, growth we have to see in the bar uh, So Just to add to Anand, I think this, uh, this could go up, we have guided for around 20 crores of, uh, you know, annualized expense for bar And as we expand to east and south in June quarter, that will further increase. And at some point we would have company owned, company operated uh, uh, showrooms as well, and at a pan-India level, the expenses will increase. Today, we are only in two zones. From June quarter, we will go into four zones. Um, so I think it's very important to see uh, Bakhtar from a long-term point of view. We believe that um, in uh, you know six quarters from now, we should look at breaking even. Before that, the focus should only be on appointing distributors, uh, reaching as many retail touch points as possible, um, and being able to establish a strong brand visibility. Um, which will take time, and uh, we have the, the luxury of a strong balance sheet to be able to take these kind of long-term bets and really use uh, the brand equity that we've created and the uh, distribution network to cross the uh, barcode. Yeah, I completely understand. What I was trying to gauge is the pipe profitability, you know, hence I was just trying to add back whatever you lost in Bathua to the pipe to see the actual EBITDA. But I get what you're saying. And last question from my side is, uh, you know, given building material has actually done better than Agri over the nine months, uh, the CPVC revenue mix uh, would have, you know, grown faster. Uh, any sense on PVC, CPVC uh, revenue mix for nine months? Is that possible to share? No, we will not share a segmental uh, breakup. Uh, sorry, I just, uh, just to address the previous question before we come to this, we have to under, to. Uh, I think I just understood what your question was. Yes, I think if you look at a normalized uh, performance, there's a 10 crore inventory loss and a 3 crore um, expense in backward. So that will give you your normalized earnings performance. Um, and uh, no, I think I'll, I'll stay away from giving breakup in terms of revenue, but directionally again, building material is doing better than I agree. Okay, appreciate all the answers. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Utkarsh. 
from Bank of Baroda. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, so my first question is that uh, if we see our debtor period has gone up from 40 days in FY20 uh, to 73, 74 days uh, in nine month of FY24, and whereas the debtor period for our major period has remained relatively stable, uh, or it has come down during the same period. And going ahead, uh, uh, we expect to perform in line with the industry from June quarter onwards. So, wanted to reconfirm from you whether we can protect our market share without diluting margin uh, and increase our debtor period further. And if you can provide the margin guidance range for FY25. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, so, yes, we will uh, start uh, normalized performance from June quarter. Without impacting our EBITDA guidance of uh, 12 to 14 percent, I think that uh, we will reiterate that uh, guidance in terms of operating margin on an annualized level, one quarter here and there is possible. But on a four quarter basis, I think 12 to 14 percent operating margin we are still confident of, um, and the debtor days will continue to reduce um, without impacting our market share. Um, at least now it you know it will come back to around the 60s, which is what it was. I think that that will be visible. Um, and to answer your question, to sum it up, yes, we will be regaining uh, our, our market share without impacting our guidance on margins or debt is. We are confident of that. Okay, so for and December quarter, if we see, uh, if we do the adjustment of uh, interim inventory loss, then our EBITDA margin came at around 14%. But so why we are guiding a range of 12 to 14 percent for FY25? Because we have historically always done that, given that guidance, and been conservative with all our guidances. Uh, so I will stick to to that. Uh, it's not that we have come up with this guidance at the end of this quarter. This is something we have been giving for the past couple of years now, and I will stick to that guidance. Okay. And for lastly, what would be our capex guidance for FY24 and 25? So FY24, uh, I must uh, exclude uh, Bihar from this. FY24 will be in the range of 100, 110 to 120 uh, crores, and uh, in FY25 it will be in the range of 90 to 100. Uh, it doesn't in include uh, the capacity which will be added in Bihar. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. We are in the 220 crores, uh, which will be split in FO24 and FO25. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhananjay from ASK. Please go ahead. Our next question is from the line. Can we move of, to the next question? Yes, sir. Asim from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning. Uh, so, just coming back to the price correction com commentary you had made earlier. So, you've talked about price correction done in Q2 and Q3 because you were outpriced with your peers. This would just be on the CPV side, right? Uh, not on the PVC per se. Uh, it is across PVC and CPVC depending on geography to geography. Wherever we felt that we had over premiumized, again I want to reiterate that this is not deep discounting. Uh, we are not resorting to discounting for growth. This is just realignment of prices to ensure that we are uh, competitive with the market and market friendly. Uh, so wherever it was required in whichever geography, in whichever product uh, category, we have taken that call and that is reflected in our uh, correction in realization for time for the December quarter, which is a conscious strategy. And that we are confident will translate into uh, regaining of market share from the June quarter. I was just trying to understand, I mean, in PVC price uh, changes from the supplier side to pipe guys, the transmission, the change in price is almost immediate. So how did we end up becoming more premium vis-a-vis -vis peers? Uh, that's what I was trying to understand. 
Yeah, just to explain to you how the industry works, whenever there is a pass-through in PVC prices, there is a uh, action uh, taken. So whenever there is an increase or decrease in raw material, we pass that on to the finished group. And in certain markets, uh, we have started leveraging our brand to pass on more than what the cost was. Or if there is a decrease, we are not passing it on fully. And in a lot of the markets, it was accepted, which is why you have seen an increase in operating margin. Uh, and this is not something which has started three or four quarters ago. This is a drive that started two or three years ago. And that is reflected in our operating margin performance. Um, what it was, you know, four or five years ago and what it is today. One of the reasons for that, apart from product mix and superior operating leverage, has been better pricing power. But in certain markets, that was not as well absorbed as it was in other markets, where we are happy to take the correction and become more market friendly. So hopefully that will be a clarity. Okay. Uh, uh, just, just one more thing. I mean, uh, we also had this ERP issue in Q1. April and May were significantly impacted, but uh, I think you caught up quite well in June. So was there some kind of volume push into the channel back then, and that could also have hampered volume performance in Q2 and Q3? No, I think one month, I think that, that was just the channel. I don't think it was some volume push. It was just that April, May was disrupted by supply chain. So the regular supply that we have to our market was disrupted. So naturally, you're going to have a vacuum in the market. And, you know, to, you know after two months of disruption, one month uh, will go in, in sort of filling that vacuum. I don't think that is the reason. And we are certain that is not the reason for the volume of Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Pravin from Prabhu Das. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thank you for uh, Prachant. So uh, the first on the Bihar expansion, uh, is it uh, uh, you know the final number uh, you're expecting? That's a 50 kT uh, thousand metric ton. Like, uh, or is there a scope for a further increase in capacity out there? This will be the first phase. So first phase will be locked at 50 kT per 200 crores. Uh, so that is, this is certain, this number will not change now. This includes pipe capacity, fitting capacity, and tank capacity. So for the short to medium term, now this first we have to execute this, and now after that, once we start growing in the east, uh, we have the land bank to um, you know, grow that over the long term. So we have uh, invested in around 35 acres of land, uh, which will help us to expand easily over the you know, five to seven year horizon. But the, the current number of uh, 50 to 52 KT for around 220 crores of capex is not going to go to any change. Thank you for that. Uh, sir, next question might be it's repetitive, but uh, uh, your realization for a for a quarter has been down more than a 10 percent. Uh, so, is it uh, possible to give any color like how much is because of the price correction you have uh, taken and uh, how much is from the RM prices down? Uh, yeah, so I think one is if you see the September call, uh, you know, we had said we are going to, we have taken pricing action uh, because in certain markets we were uh, outpriced. So, that is reflected in this. Of course, this kind of 10% correction is not on account only of price correction. It's a function of both the pass-through in the reduction in cost and the um, pricing action that we have taken. Um, so if you see that the, the, the peers, our realization cut is the highest. So it's a function of both the reason. It's hard for me to quantify how much is because of pricing action and how much is because of cost reduction. Uh, because there are multiple geographies, multiple categories, but it's a combination of both the factors. Okay. And uh, in your uh, press release, you have mentioned the witness a strong restocking in the distribution channel. Uh, so is that the current uh, scenario? Uh, and also, uh, you know, I'm just uh, referring to your peers also given similar kind of a commentary for 30-35% of a growth for the fourth quarter. So you are also witnessing the similar kind of, uh, uh, you know, things in the business. 
given currently channel inventory is moderate uh, like i said yes of course we saw some correction in um, the december quarter which is why channel inventory was lower which i think has come back to moderate i think uh, more importantly than immediate term let me focus on long term i think pvc prices are going to be stable they are going to be range bound as a result of which you will not see major um, ups and downs in channel inventory uh, which i think is a very good environment a very growth conducive environment so i think more important than short term it's important to look at long term pvc prices are affordable and range bound which i think and that i think is here to stay uh, so that's how we see it and i think those a strong restocking that we were talking about was about the base quarter of q3 which was of last q3 we are not talking about current q3 then go through the quote uh, you know that that would be clear uh, if not i have call can can speak to you after the call and, and give that clarification fine and uh, just one clarification uh, your uh, chennai plant capacity from the quarter on quarter the capacity Uh, you know quote is changing uh, so from the fourth quarter last year to now the third quarter every quarter uh, the capacity number uh, is changing why is it so yeah so that is normal i think we we are adding capacity in chennai so from 42 kt in september quarter it has come to 47 kt i think this realignment of capacity is done in normal course of business Um, so, are you reduced as now? Correct. Sorry, so, sorry. this is realignment of capacity. What we do based on the uh, market forces of demand and supply. Um, so, to current capacity is around three lakh thirty eight kb, including the HPP expansion at Jaipur and the um, Chennai capacity coming to around forty five. So, that takes the total to three lakh thirty eight. Okay, and uh, one more just to clarify on, uh, you had also mentioned in the press release expanding the distribution and strengthening the channel network. So, can you quantify the numbers? How much of distribution you have right now? Uh, don't have the numbers offhand. Uh, Carl will connect with you post the call to to share the details. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. Our next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just two follow-up questions. Uh, first, on the uh, could you share the dates on how is the project sales team ramping up? How much is of how much of your revenues are coming from project sales? And second is, could you share the capacity which you mentioned total? Uh, you know, break up between uh, your capacity CPVC, PVC, and SDP. Uh, could you repeat the question? We are not able to hear you actually. Hello, sir. Uh, my first question pertains to uh, could you share how has been the ramp up in your project sales? Which earlier you have been talking about, uh, you know, you are trying to uh, improve the uh, project sales. And second is, uh, can you share the product-wise capacity across CPVC, PVC, and HDP? So I think our project sales is doing well. Uh, we have made entry into a lot of the accounts uh, over the past quarter and the past nine month period, um, which helps us make reference projects and further increase. Um, our penetration in the project segment. We have also been able to significantly increase number of specifications and brand approvals in the approved list of makes, which is a step one to then uh, cracking the um, project. So we have got significant breakthroughs, and we are well poised and continue to expand to new centers uh, for the project uh, vertical. Apart from just the metro, now we are looking at uh, tier two project markets like. Vijayagar uh, and Chandigarh and Lucknow and Jaipur, apart from the eight metro cities. So I think that's on track. And second part of the question, I think, is is uh, segmental capacity, which um, I think it will be uh, it's hard to give a number because there is a fungibility between PVC and CPVC. 
Uh, but broadly, it would be a function of our product mix, with lion's share being PVC, PPVC being around 20 to 25 um, percent, uh, and the PPR being 5 to 7 percent, and HDP being uh, 4 to 5 percent. So I think it would be broadly a function of that, but hard to uh, quantify because of the fungibility between one-way fungibility between CPVC and PVC. <laughs> And so this HDP product, which you earlier guided that this uh, revenue share will ramp up to 7-8% in Q4. Uh, yeah, I think you touched upon that in an earlier uh, participant's question. So, uh, you know, are you seeing that on track, 7-8% in Q4? And is this a better margin product compared to your average, uh, you know, 12 to 14% margin range which you share? So I think uh, we are trying for seven to eight percent, but that's over the long term. That's not for Q4. Uh, we have added yeah, around uh, six thousand yeah. tons of capacity at Jaipur, which okay. takes our total to Jaipur uh, capacity at around forty-four kT, um, and the machines are running uh, at idle peak capacity utilization for HDP. And once this first phase of expansion at HDP, if it seems sustainable and the forces of demand are uh, you know sustaining, we have the infrastructure to. Um, add HDP at our new facilities. Um, so phase one is complete, and at least for now, the utilization is high. Um, so that's how we see it. And I think the last question was in terms of margin. I think HDP, of course, is more, as everyone is aware, more of a volume product, not a value added product. But like an organization level, we will stick to the guidance of uh, 12 to 14 percent, uh, which includes the uh, capacity expansion in, in HDP. Mm -hmm. And lastly, this working capital uh, increase which has happened, are you confident that in March these numbers will again moderate towards uh, normal levels? Yes. Okay. Great, sir. That's all from my end. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Shubham Agrawal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up. I just wanted one clarification. I got confused in the numbers. Uh, uh, 3 crore is the uh, EBITDA loss for Bathfair or is it uh, the ANP and manpower cost in Bathfair? ANP and Bathfair. Uh, ANP and manpower cost for Bathfair segment is 3 crore for December quarter. Right. So you've not actually shared the EBITDA loss for that segment, right? That was all. Just we have shared the top line and the expense for the December quarter. Yes, yes. So that answers your question. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Asim from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. I just uh, one more question. Uh, not sure if I got it right when discussed earlier, but how do we protect market share or gain market share vis-a-vis -vis industry and cut your receivable deal at the same time in the near term or in FY25? Yeah, so like we said, we are over-premiumized in certain markets, so it's not that we are deep discounting. We're just re reducing that premium, uh, which is already factored in, if you see, for quarter three, uh, the realization was uh, have decreased, uh, which shows that we have already taken the price in action. Just for that to translate into uh, volume growth would take a couple of quarters because market is not like an on and off switch that would take some time. Uh, so we are not deep discounting, we are just becoming competitive and aligning our prices in certain markets for certain problems. But uh, how does your receivable days also decline from the current levels of 73? We will be using channel finance. Uh, even in December quarter, we have added 20 distributors, and we will uh, continue to increase uh, channel finance so that we are not, uh, you know, it's not a payoff between sales or receivables. Ensuring that the channel is adequately financed helps us ensure that growth is there, but not at the cost of credit. So to answer the question how that happens, it's through becoming more aggressive with channel finance, which now luckily is the complete request has been off our books for some time. So now we will, you know, we have started becoming more aggressive in channel finance. And as the channel becomes more, you know, is, is better capitalized, that ensures that it's not a payoff between sales 
and good. But we have been doing this for some time, right? Uh, is the channel financing extended only to a small part of the channel still? Of course, we, you know, we still have to, there is a certain due diligence process that we have internally. So we will not give it to each and every distributor. There is a certain criteria that the internal finance team has and that the banks have. Um, so it's a process. This, you know, this cannot happen overnight. Okay. Thank you, Nia. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to management for the closing comments. Thank you to all for attending the call. Thank you.